Hello, everyone, and welcome to another PFF podcast short on the NFL draft class. We'll be talking about a polarizing prospect in this class, and that's Deshaun Watson from Clemson. Uh, John, we're, we're, we're here with John Breitenbach, and uh, I'm John Costco, your host. Uh, John Breitenbach here has, uh, he really likes Deshaun Watson. He has his, his number one quarterback in this class. First things, John, uh, when you're looking at quarterbacks, what, what do you look for and why do you like Deshaun Watson so much? Well, you mentioned it, John. As you say, he is a polarizing player. But for me, with Watson, you've got to focus on the positives because his wow plays are just at another level than some of the quarterbacks we see in this class. He's also put more of them on tape. Two straight years of leading his team to a national championship. Some of those fade balls or all those back shoulder throws we've seen to Mike Williams, really tight coverage. Some of these tight window plays that he's able to make have just taken my breath away this year. You look at how accurate he can be in the red zone on slants, fades, uh, curls. He he can really thread the needle when uh, it comes to those tight field situations. And obviously, he is one of the more clutch performers we've seen at the position in recent seasons. You go back to that first national championship game when he had very little support and almost led a historic comeback, taking hit after hit, which he's done over the past few years. He can deliver an impressive an impressive ball despite being under pressure. He's really a guy who, who does it all for me and represents the complete package. I know you, though, have some more concerns. Uh, would you like to outline them? Yeah, I, I agree with, with pretty much everything that you say. He, you know, he's fantastic in the clutch and the biggest moments um, in the biggest stage. He pulls through and, and, and drives, you know, his team down the field, um, can make every throw in the field. He can, he sh- has shown the ability to be able to read defenses and, and throw it to the correct receivers doing so. My concerns with, with him are that Last year, in 2015, he had a really good season. He started slow, but then obviously finished the season extremely high, on an extremely high note and almost won that national championship game. Coming into the season, you're expecting him to take a, a leap forward, and he really didn't do that. Did had the same same problems where he he started really slowly, pretty inconsistent with his accuracy, and then then the end of the season, he he turned it on again. So I think I think what you know what I was hoping to see from him coming in this year is to see a, a bigger progression from him. And then when he, I, you know, I did say that he does read the field really well uh, when he's shown that ability, he doesn't do it on a consistent basis that, that Clemson offense will have a, you know, he, he'll have a, a leap to make and to the NFL to be able to actually have progression reads. It's not just, not just going well, one, two, three, and actually being having, having to read the defense and, and knowing where to go with the football. Uh, and then obviously being able to read pre-snap coverages and the rotation that they'll show. So I don't, you know, I, I still have a first round grade on the, on the guy. I, I like him as a, as a quarterback and some, somebody that will be able to succeed in the NFL. I, I just don't have him as my, my number one quarterback. I have him currently as my number three. Yeah. I think you make a couple of an important points to touch on. You are right in regard to a couple of seasons now in a row where he has started slowly. That's applied within games as well. He is, A guy who needs to get into a rhythm when he's out of a funk. He will put a few ugly reps together on tape. But what I like is that he doesn't remain in that funk for entire games. And at one point in in every game this year, he has really emerged from that and and shown the poise to to get back into a groove and, and to continue making plays. He's a guy who can respond to adversity. I think we throw around the, the leader tag too easily probably nowadays, but uh, in those terms, I think he, he's capable of, of representing a franchise both on and off the field. But Definitely. That, that off the field for him is, is A++ for sure. That's, that's, that's a, uh, a very key asset and trait for him, so I agree with you on that for sure. Yeah, and his durability as well is, I think, uh, factor that that hasn't really b- been considered. He's a guy who you can largely count on to play 16 games a year from day one, which in this league where the quality of backup quarterbacks is so poor, 
that that is also a key a key trait. I think it is worth touching on the field vision. As you say, there are some inconsistent reps in there. There are some really ugly misreads for for interceptions. But I would say those those pale into the minority. I think he has shown enough of ability to to read a defense and and locate uh, maybe a second or third read. But uh, it is it is certainly a concern. But I think looking through his list of positives, of which there are many, I discussed him in the red zone. I think he throws with outstanding touch. I really like his ability to take heat off the ball. But at the same to- uh, in the same token, he can really put some velocity on it when he needs to. Probably not the most accurate quarterback, but he, I think his accuracy, accuracy is certainly good enough. Yeah, definitely. It, it's it's definitely good enough. I, you know, we do this this QB charting, the the like I guess I call it the advanced accuracy charting. He's uh at the top of the pack. He's not the best, and you know, last year was better for him, but he definitely shows enough enough accuracy, especially to you know open receivers and and you know t- uh, you know with a, a receivers with a step or uh, being closed on. So uh, he he can he can. Sh- Show the a good enough accuracy that it's. I think his accuracy is not a not a concern for me at all. And, and it's just it's more of progressing with those reads where I think you know he he'll be able to become a really good NFL quarterback. It's just I think when you're coming from his system into the NFL, there will be a steep learning curve. But I have no doubt that with his you know like you were talking about his off field and his work ethic and all that the intangible stuff. He will succeed because um, that's just the type of person he is, and he already has. He does have the talent to be able to get to that, you know, that next level. Then, you know, look, another thing that's um, concerning for him though is that his pocket awareness is pretty, pretty inconsistent. He'll he'll tend to uh, scramble directly into sacks. I think you saw that in the national championship game where he he bail out of the pocket backwards and directly into a, a, a sack instead of seeing an open lane where he was able could have been able to step up into that. But yeah, I mean, I, I think we're, I think we're in agreement. Like, you know, he's going to be a successful NFL quarterback. It's just, you know, you might see him as a, a starter earlier uh, than I do. Um, and how, you know, how soon will he get there and, and how you would rank the other quarterbacks basically. Yeah. I think pocket presence is another slight issue with him, but for every sack he takes, I see him escaping, you know, three or four more. Maybe it's not perfect footwork. Maybe he isn't taking the idea route, but the fact that he can move around back there, break a sack, we've seen that can really break the back of a defense. He made some ridiculous plays this year, running to his left against the grain, going across his body from a, from a tough platform under pressure, and he still showed the showed the arm strength and accuracy to get it to his intended target. I do think he's also a pass first guy. Um, you know, some of these quarterbacks that have come out of college who have had too great an emphasis on their legs have struggled. I don't see him that in that category at all. I think his uh, his legs are a weapon that he can use, but I wouldn't necessarily want to build. A running game around him, uh, like Sarah Cam Newton. Yeah, I, I agree. I think because he's an athletic quarterback, people uh, peg him as this guy who's going to run first. But he's actually he actually does not do that. He's he's a guy that's always looking down the field to make plays with his arm and will run second. And uh, he's you know, and as athletic as he is, he's not he's not even as athletic as like a Marcus Mariota, an RG three. And even even like Russell Wilson and, and Johnny Manziel, those guys had you know better combine numbers. They're more you know those guys had better had better agility and, and used their legs more. Uh, obviously, Russell Wilson has, has doesn't do that, but he he can use his legs if he needs to. And I think just Deshaun Watson's that same type, where he is looking down the field to make plays. Uh, with his arm before he's he's running, and you look at too, we criticize him for his pocket pocket awareness at, at times, but he doesn't take that many sacks. You look at last year and, and this year, you know, 2015, he took a sack on on 
on pressure dropbacks at just 11.4 percent of the time, and this year was 11.1 percent of the time, which is one of the best uh, mark you know rates in the class. And I also don't I don't really look at his interceptions as a big issue. You know, look at a guy like Matt Ryan who threw 19 his senior year, Jameis Winston threw 18 his senior year. So you know you can succeed in the NFL with throwing interceptions and and you have to put context to those interceptions and how they can mitigate them with their other types of throws. And clearly Watson has, has graded in our system two years in a row, extremely high. Uh, and that, that has a lot to say for itself. And I think that, you know, you look at somebody like him, he's what, lost three games in his career in college and won 30, 31 or 32. I think people are starting to just try to nitpick at him and go, well, he can't do this. He can't do that. But you have to look at all the things like you said in the beginning, look at all the things he can do. And that's, you know, he, he's, he's a clear, can, can clearly be the face of the franchise. He had, he held three jobs at the age of 15 while his, his mother had tongue cancer and was essentially the man of the house because she was a single mom and took care of his family while still going to school and playing football. Obviously that's carried on to being a, a successful uh, college career. So I, I have no doubt that he can, put all that to, to use and good use to being a good NFL quarterback. Yeah, I think you make good points. You touched on, on mindset a couple of times then in, in two regards. And the first is that he is just used to winning and players who get into that sort of niche don't do often continue in that regard. And the other factor is those interceptions, which a few of them are really terrible plays, but then probably the majority are plays where he's balancing the risk reward of, of, of trying to make a play. Every quarterback's got to do the same of when to be aggressive and, and try and push, push the ball down the field. He isn't afraid to take a risk. He does put some jump balls up, but if you get the, the right receiver for him and Mike Williams obviously was that this year, then he's going to be absolutely lethal breaking those big plays off. We saw against Ohio State as well that you can you can contain his arm perhaps, but he just breaks off that 40-yard run, breaking tackle after tackle. And from a defensive perspective, I just think that poses you so many problems that that no other quarterback really does in this class. Yeah, I agree. I mean, think about this this national championship game, and he won that game with his arm. And yeah, his his receivers made some big time plays. But he, he made some big time throws as well and some runs, but he was always looking to use his arm first. You think about the 2006 national title game where Texas, you know, Vince Young basically single handedly beat USC. Uh, and that was, that was him running the ball and not, that was not a, you know, I don't, I don't want to compare the two because they're completely, two completely different quarterbacks. And Vince Young was, he was solid as a thrower, but he was, Obviously, he used his legs first, and so you know Watson uses his arm to to win games. Another thing that I like about him, when you look at last year to this past year, uh, under pressure, Watson in in, in 2015 had a pass rating of just 68. He had a and a negative grade. He was pretty bad under pressure, so that was something that we needed to see improvement on. And he and he did. He had a pass rating of 87.6 this past year, and had a positive grade. Uh, you know, a big swing in his grade, a, a 20 point swing. So, um, that alone shows that, Hey, he's, he's progressed. Even if there was parts of his game that you wanted to see him do better at, he showed in a, in pretty much the most critical part of, of a quarterback's play, which is, you know, throwing under pressure. He improved quite a bit. So, um, yeah, I think he, he'll, I mean, where do you think he's going to be uh, falling in this draft? Do you think he's going to go go top 10, top 5, or will he fall because people are, are nitpicking at him? Well, I've been on, on record saying I would happily take him first overall. Look, I know Miles Garrett is incredible, but I want if I'm the Browns and I'm sitting at one and I'm saying there's a chance, say they like one of the other quarterbacks at 12, say there's a chance that, which I think is fair that they don't reach that point. How do you then play it? I would say you're better off perhaps compromising on the defensive side of the ball in order to get a guy who 
can be your franchise and and can change the fortunes of your franchise in su- with such an instant pick. Now, I know perhaps they don't like Watson, perhaps they prefer one of the other guys, which is completely legitimate. But for me, I think you compare this year's crop to last year's, and I think you're looking at probably two, maybe even three superior prospects. That's a that's an interesting take right there. I know that you know that's this class has has had a lot of, of debate and and people are up and down on them. I know last year everybody was saying Goff and Wentz, they're they clear cut one and two, and really nobody is saying that about about these guys. Um, when you talk about Watson going, you know, you take him number one, that means this, you you are completely sold on him. And I think if the Browns Obviously, if they were to pass up on, on somebody like Miles Garrett, who is clearly a generational talent and, you know, he, from a production standpoint and then an athletic standpoint, he just, he crushes it and he's, you know, head and shoulders above everybody in this class in that aspect. But I agree with you. If you fall in love with a quarterback and you absolutely think that this guy is the franchise quarterback and will be your guy for the next 10, 15 years, you would take him at number one and you don't, you don't risk, you know, okay, well, well, let's, we'll let, we'll take him at 12 because we don't think everybody else thinks this quarterback class is that high. And he goes number two and you're, and you're, you're done for. You, you've lost your guy. So yeah, I agree. You, if you are absolutely in love with this guy, you take him number one and it doesn't matter which quarterback it is. If you, if you fall in love with Patrick Mahomes, if you fall in love with Deshaun Kaiser, if you fall in love with Mitchell Trubisky, you take him number one. If, if, do you think he's going to be that franchise quarterback? Um, I don't know if the Browns are there, right? what teams are going to be there. I think that he probably does go top 10. I don't know where he will fall. It's just, I don't know if their teams are going to start picking him like they did Teddy Bridgewater a couple years ago. It's interesting, but, uh, uh, you know, it'll be, inter- it'll be fun to watch come, come draft day on how it all shakes out because these quarterbacks, I don't, I, I agree with you that I like, I like these quarterbacks a lot, and I really did like uh, Goff a lot last year. I wasn't really high on Wentz, but any of these guys, I think, you know, can go top 10. And I think last year, you know, three of them could have easily have gone top 10 as well because of, you know, the need there. But you make a good point with, and I'm kind of going on here, but if they pass on Miles Garrett, this is a loaded defensive draft. Loaded. So you can still... If you get your quarterback at, at one, you can get a, a, a really, really good player at number 12, you know, even an edge defender that you would be replacing Miles Garrett. And will he have the type of career that Miles Garrett, you know, is projected to have? Probably not. But he, if he's 85% of that, that's still an extremely good player. Yeah. Simply the, the compromise should never be made at quarterback. But I think that is fairly well established with those top teams, the teams who really did struggle last year and that's why you look at that top five there's got to be quarterbacks going in there you would imagine at least from my perspective no oh, i agree and, and even like a team like the jets they should be looking at it too so you have um you know jaguars are an interesting one they may or may not pass on you know give up on blake Bortles. they might give him another year because he is a year removed from having a really solid you know sophomore campaign so you know, John, this has been uh, a good discussion, and it'll be fascinating to see how this develops throughout the, the draft process and on draft day. But uh, that is all we have time for. Remember, everybody, to uh, head over to ProFootballFocus.com, uh, take, get a look at uh, our stuff that we have. We have new scouting reports going out every day. And also, get a, subscribe to our draft pass. First, first year we're doing this draft pass, you can get an um, updated spider charts of, of all these prospects, their, their three-year uh, grades and stats. Uh, really good stuff. Really affordable too. I think it's I think it's like $20 just for all the information you can get for, on these players. So head over there, take a look. Give us a, a rating on iTunes and on Android or whatever platform you're listening to this on. 